morning everybody i'm a little bit behind i've not done really many videos recently not been too well but it'll all be great but basically we have a collaboration today so i had a date had to get it out and it was really good for me because it motivated me to get going and get something else done now the collaboration was with get the names right mana from at dolls rescued and the other one i'm gonna have to check because it's not one i know so i'm gonna be popping over that channel to have a little look as well and it's Shelley's Dollies. Now they set this sort of collaboration to make something for a rainbow high doll, which is something I have, but haven't made anything for. So again, it was a bit of fun. And it was to make a halter top and a skirt. I know a lot of them are going to be doing like sewing tutorials and things like that, which is really great. But as you know, I don't really sew. I sew when I have to, but it's not really my sort of craft of choice, shall we say. So I'm just picking up my girl here. And um, we get a straight. Let me get you straight, missus. And this is what I've done. I hope you can see that okay. Now, this is super easy. If you are a beginner, you might need to check out a couple of stitches, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do it. And it is super quick. It is really quick. So if you've got lots of these girls, obviously I've picked a nice purple here because Emmy Van Der sort of suits that purple vibe, as you can see. But if you've got a set of them, you could get these outfits out really quick. They could all have one outfit sort of to match the hair colours, etc, etc, matching their personalities. So this is what we're going to be making today. As I say, it is super quick. It is in UK terms. Please remember that. So you may need a conversion chart to have a little look. But I really enjoyed making it. So I will see you in a moment, top down, and we'll get this little outfit made. See you in a second. Hi, here we are with our Emmy Vander here and her little crochet outfit here for the collaboration between Manor at Dolls Rescue and Shelley's Dollies. Please remember there's going to be quite a lot of people doing this and some going to be some really, really good videos. I can't wait to go and have a nosy myself when they're all uploaded. There are 11 in total. I think that includes me, 11 people. There was 12, but unfortunately one is unable to do it. So I'm going to pop a link below so you can just click on it and have a look at their pages and see what they've got up to. There will be, like I said, lots of different types of outfits. As you know, I don't really sew, so I haven't gone for sewing. I've gone for crochet, but there's going to be loads. It can be really, really cool. So we're going to get on with this. And as this is the outfit, I just added a little bit of bling. You don't need to. This was just some gold chain that I had. It's just some cheap old gold chain. And I just sort of undid the links and fastened them on. You could do all sorts of ways of doing it. You could do it a crochet belt you could pop beads on it's entirely up to you how you decorate now the buttons i've got here now there is a button and you will need a button unless you're going to use press studs but i did it with a button can you see how i've got sort of like this a little loop and a button at the back there so those are the size buttons that i used but again a bead would be just as adequate as a button so entirely up to you what you use now coming on to the actual yarn this is what i've used it's geezer cotton four ply from king cotton kinky oh i can't speak king cole obviously i'm here in the uk so it might not be a brand you can get any four ply cotton will do any four ply acrylic will do i just like the cotton because i think it shows definition a little bit more on an outfit now i'm just having a look it is a mercerized cotton as you can see so you get like this nice shine on it i do like mercerized cottons scissors i need obviously my needles my pen and of course the most important bit is the actual hook isn't it we're going to be using a three millimeter crochet hook now as much as i mentioned conversion charts for yarn and for stitches and things like that you might need one for hooks as well because again this is a uk size the size of the hook is the same i think it just holds a different name that's all so keep an eye out for that one so we're going to get straight into this we're going to start with the top first it is super quick super easy um and that's sort of partly what this sort of these I can't think of the word, this collaboration, should I say, is about. It's about making it sort of nice, easy, sort of beginners type things. That's why I'm saying I'm looking forward to looking at the sewing as well on these uh, collaborations from the other people. So here we go. Slip knot time. On to the hook. For once, I'm not working in an amigurumi style. I'm going to be working in rows. And now we're going to start by doing 21 chain. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nearly there, nineteen, twenty, 
21. So that is the part that's going to go around her body. I know it looks small, but she is only quite tiny. That one on here is a little bit bigger. So I've actually reduced the stitches down by a couple for this one because my prototype ones always sort of needs altering a little bit. Now, before we start the row, I'm going to do one more chain. That is our turning chain. It is not a stitch. We need to make sure we go in the stitch that's next to it. And we're going to do one double crochet into every single chain. This is always the worst sort of row or round for me. I don't know about you. Hate foundation rows. Absolutely hate them. But if we haven't got one, we haven't got any crochet. So it is important we get that foundation row in or round, depending on what you're doing. And when you get past it, you can sort of, I always think, well, when I've done my foundation row, right now I can crochet. I sort of relax a little bit more into my work. So this is counted as our first row of double crochets. And all you're going to be having is three of them. Unless you want to make the top a little bit longer. And then maybe you could add an extra row in. That's in completely up to you. This is just a basic pattern that you can then play around with and alter as you would like. Nearly at the end of that first one. I am going to mark it down. I know it's only four rows, but I'm going to mark it down. Right, see that's where my slip knot is. I'm just tightening that up a little bit. Right, so that is one of our three. We're not going to do any joins. As I say, we're working just straight backwards and forwards rows. So I'm going to do a chain and I'm going to turn my work. I like to do my chain before I turn my work. Entirely up to you which way you do it. And remember, directly below, because that chain does not count as a stitch. And off we go. This is our second row. Look at that. We're almost halfway through the actual tutorial for the top already. And I said it'd be quick, and that is really quick. I've no idea how quick. I don't know why I didn't time myself. It would have been interesting to see. I'll be, I'll be looking at the clock after the fact when I watch the video back um, to make sure everything's okay. Oh, nearly missed a stitch there. You do have to be careful with these yarns. I think the cotton can split. I like cotton, as I've mentioned. I like the definition it creates. I just think it's a very neat uh, yarn to work with. But it's, it isn't really very forgiving. I must admit, I think the acrylic yarns are much more forgiving if you make a mistake. If you do a loose stitch in this, you're going to know about it. But you can do it this in an acrylic. It does not have to be in a cotton. Right. Don't forget that last stitch because it doesn't look like a stitch. It just looks like a lump, don't it? And there we go. One chain and turn. And now we're going to do our last row of just one double crochet into each stitch. So now we're well over halfway. The next row is going to have a little bit of shaping just to sort of go over the bust. It's not nothing complicated. and It's not really shaping. It's just changing the size of your stitch. And then we need to do some little chains to actually fasten it onto her and obviously our button, etc. See, it got a bit of a split then. Apologies for my voice keep going in and out. And I've had a drink. Um, I don't know. It's very, very warm here at the moment. Had to stop to have a little cough then. As I was about to say, it's really warm here and the pollen count is really high. And as much as I don't have hay fever, not like some people do, thankfully, if it is a little bit sort of over the average, it does get to me. That's all it does, gives me a tickle in my throat. I'm not, not bad with it or anything like that. Right, so we're at the end of that third row. We're going to do a chain. We're going to turn. We're going to do seven double crochets. So one double crochet in each of the next seven. That makes more sense, doesn't it? Otherwise, you'd think I'm doing seven in one. There we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we're going to miss one stitch. And in the next stitch, you're going to do five trebles. So this is the shaping. That's all it takes. Just change the size of the stitch. So here we go with our five trebles. We have one, two, three, 
four and five so it's all in that same one so it creates this little shell shape we're going to miss one and in the next one we're going to do a slip stitch not a double crochet because it takes it lower so it gives your shape a little bit more definition now we're going to miss one and in the next one you've got it we're going to do five trebles so we've got one two i've got a bit of a split there three four and five we're going to miss one stitch and we're just going to do a double crochet to the end we should have seven fingers crossed so we're going to miss one and then i'm going to have one two three four five six and that funny last one seven da -da. now i'm not gonna i'm gonna stop there but i'm not gonna fasten off because i want to create like a little loop here so we can fasten it onto the button so this last stitch i've just done i'm going to do another double crochet in it helps me get around the corner i'm then going to do a double crochet in the stitch down the side and three chain one two and three just three and then into the next one i'm going to do a double crochet okay and one in the very last one which is actually the chain so you can see we just get that little loop and that little loop is what's going to go over our actual button so we're going to just fasten that off the top itself is done that is it the top is done we do need to do some straps which of course we need but as you can see we've got that little bit of shape there which is really cute and all i'm going to do is it's not really the end of the world. You decide which way you want the shells to look, okay? You can see you get a different effect that side to what you get on that side. I'm going with this side. So into the middle one, the fifth one, I'm going to pop my hook in. I'm going to pull some yarn through and I'm going to do a chain. And then I'm going to do a double crochet back into that. It stabilizes it, okay? Just makes it a little bit stronger. And then I'm going to do a 40 chain. Oh, 40 chain, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Halfway. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. You can go to sleep for a while if you want now. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 30, only 10 more to go then. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Right, now what I'm going to do here, you know, to actually fasten this bit off here. First of all, I'm going to obviously cut my end, but then I'm going to cut another piece here. It's about probably about 8, 9 inches. That It doesn't really matter because you're going to trim it, but a nice sort of long piece. And before I fasten it off, I'm going to pull that piece through as well. Yeah. So it looks like when I then tighten, tighten it carefully, it looks like we've got three pieces coming out of it, yeah? And then I'm going to tie a knot. Now the knot needs to come to the end of the chain, but it also needs to catch the other two. So can you see? I've just created a knot. And then that's not going to go anywhere. I can just trim it so it gives it like a tassel on the end. And if you want, depending on the yarn, you can split the yarn here and it gives it sort of more of a frilly tassel effect. So obviously we need to do that on the other side. I'm not going to because I'm going to pinch this one off here because you don't need to see me do that. You need another 40 chain obviously on the other side. And let's pinch Emmy's top here. And I can show you. You can see where I've tied the bow. The only thing is the hair gets in the way, doesn't it? She's had her hair tied in a plait while I've been working. So we'll pop you over there if you've not got your top on. So basically, this is what you should end up with because you obviously you've got your other side of your chain. So these can either just go over. I'll have to bring you back now, Mrs. I'm going to have to move your hair out of the way. Let's move your hair up there and I'll pop your arms to one side. So you can either have it as a normal strap, just straight over like that or I just crossed mine you can cross them mess about with them however you want to sort of create your design then it is quite versatile then so you can see I've just crossed that over I've done these long because if you want you could go round the arms you can mess about with that but you need it long enough so you can tie a nice bow at the back that is why it is pretty long there and again afterwards I just added on this little bit of chain and the little button at the end 
so then the little loop you've made will just pop over the button there okay so we're going to pop that to one side and we're going to have a look at the skirt so i'm going to pinch the skirt off you missus so we can have a proper look she's probably thinking charming you just made me something and now you've took it off me so here is the skirt the chain added optional that is completely up to you but i do make it so as you can thread something through it so you could just thread a little belt through or something i only put the chain on the front bit because the chain made it too tight to actually pull up her body so think about that depending on what you're threading through you need to be able to pull it onto the doll so i only did it at that little bit there so let's grab this yarn back I'm going to move you up there, missus. I need to change my page because I've written it on the other side. Again, it's quite quick, quite easy to make. We're going to start roughly the same as we did last time. We have our slip knot. And this time we're going to start with 35 chain. Now, do check your tension on your doll as well while you're doing this because your tension could be slightly different to mine, either a bit looser or a bit tighter. So you do need to check. 35 chain, here we go. One, two, three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven at least it's not ninety twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight nearly there twenty nine thirty five more one two three four and five so i checked that that actually went round her hips then and i was happy with that all yarn has a little bit of stretch this won't stretch as i say if you did it in an acrylic yarn you could probably get away with that stretch a little bit more the 100 percent cotton you can see there is some stretch there but not a huge amount so i'm going to do one chain which is not going to be counted as a stitch it's just for my turn so one chain and then i'm going to do one double crochet like we did similar to the top in every single one of those 35 chain. You've just got a few more chain now, that's all. My video is probably generally going to take longer than the guys who sew, because crochet does take longer than sewing. Um, but I still think this is a pretty fast, fast tutorial. Well, it will be if I can catch the stitch. So we're just doing one row of one double crochet into each of those chain and so it's that dreaded foundation row again but it's worth it it is worth it as i say, just be grateful it's not 90 stitches i did a scarf once that started with 300 stitches and then because it was like a curly scarf then it was like three in each on the three in each and things like that i'm like oh no like over a thousand i thought oh that's an easy scarf it was easy but very tedious i'm quite an impatient person so things like this yeah i, I do get a little bit fed up attention span of a gnat not that i know what a gnat's attention span is so we're almost there now you've already got there before me please be patient i will get to you we will do something different in a second if you are finding it's a little bit quick if you are a very beginner just slow me down in the settings or just pause it do your stitches and come back to me when i change the next bit now we are actually going to be joining this one now i didn't join the top did i because we had a button fasten but we are going to be joining the skirt that's why i say you need to make sure it fits around the doll right so we're at the end, just tighten that up, and I'm going to turn it over. So that is the back facing me now, and I'm flattening it all out to get into that very first stitch. So make sure it's all flat, because if you twist it here, it will make your next row very difficult. So I'm going to tighten it all up, tighten it up carefully. So I don't want a big gap here, and I'm just going to do a slip stitch yep so i've just joined it don't worry about this tiny little gap here because you when you sort of sew your ends in you can stitch that across so it's not a problem so don't worry about it we're going to start with two chain now that two chain is going to count as a half treble but then we need to do another chain which just counts as a chain we're going to miss one stitch and we're going to do a half treble into the next one remember half treble 
in the UK term to come through all three. So it starts like a treble, yarn round, miss one, into the next one, pull it through, three on the hook, pull it through all three. One chain, there's always a chain in between, miss one, half treble. One chain, miss one, half treble. One chain, don't forget that one chain, miss one, half treble. Chain, miss one, half treble. So you get the pattern where we're going now. It's just a half treble, we do a chain, we miss a stitch, we do another half treble. And this is what's making that sort of where I've threaded my chain through. So I say you could thread a little crochet belt that you could tie up. That's how I've done it on the Smart Doll ones because they're very curvy girls. Um, so sometimes it's very hard to get the shape in. So sometimes you have to make it bigger and then tighten it up after. So a little sort of crochet belt chain is quite a nice way of doing it. I could do it in a contrast colour perhaps. We're almost round. Can you see how it's sort of creating? Uh, it's almost like a ladder. Can you see what we've got there? So one chain, miss one, and half treble. My day is going so quick today. I know I've got lots to catch up on, but uh, it's like we're almost on dinner time, aren't we already? The time is running away. We're almost there, so we miss one half treble. Got doll hair stuck in it as well now. Make sure you do a chain on that last one, and then we're going to slip stitch into the top of that first two chain. Okay, so you can see we've got this sort of ladder effect now. What we're going to do next is we're going to go back to double crochets, but to make it easier, we do need a double crochet in each stitch, but to also give definition to this ladder work, if we just do two double crochets into each chain space, you could do the chain space then a stitch if you want, but I do find if you do the two in each chain space, it gives more definition. So one chain and then two double crochets. Yep into every single one chain space it's also an easier stitch to do because you haven't got to sort of try and mess about trying to get in the top of stitches and into chains and and things like that i think my stitches caught then if it catches take it out because it's just where the cotton has actually split right off we go again so two double crochets into each chain space Almost round now. Then move that. That I think that's her hair. Yeah, it's, it's a purple hair. Let's move it out the way. So love long hair on dolls. Hate having to see to them. They get tangled. You don't even have. You don't have to look at them, and they tangle. It's very frustrating. How many more have we got? We've got two more, three more. I think it's three more, isn't it? So again, with the skirt, to be honest, we're already, you know, a good distance into it. We've got the waistband on. I mean, it is a very short skirt. If you wanted to make it longer, we're gonna, do, you would do just more of these double crochet rows. It's more like a summer outfit, so I've got a nice short top. Perhaps you can put it on over a swimming costume or something like that. Now, I'm just, just to, if I could speak, I'm just double checking what I did. Right, we're going to do another row of just one double crochets in each. So again, either pause me, stop me, go ahead of me. I will see you in a minute if you are doing that. And we're just doing one double crochet into every single one of those double crochets. I'm trying to get three videos done back to back at the moment, uh, not crochet ones, um, because we've got a busy weekend. Uh, my granddaughter's got a dance show tomorrow, so we're running backwards and forwards for rehearsals and then back for the show, etc, etc. So that's going to be chaos. 
and then on the Sunday I've got a chance to go to the Wool Monte. Now that is in Sheffield here, which is not too far from me. So I'm going with my friend, and basically it's just lots and lots of wool, but lots of artisan type walls, and there's other bits and bobs, accessories and things like that. There's workshops, there's all sorts. Um, so I'm planning on going spending and buying some pretty wool. I mean, they are artisan walls and they are more expensive, but oh, they are gorgeous. Well worth it. So I've got a busy weekend. So I'm going to get to Sunday afternoon. And because Sunday is Father's Day here in the UK as well. Uh, so I'm going to get to Sunday afternoon. And, uh, well, won't want to do a great deal more. But I will have had a great weekend. So that's all that really matters. So I'm round. Can you see we've got... You see how it's starting to sort of flare out? It's just very slightly as well. That's just changing stitches. You can get different shapes on things just purely by changing the stitch size. Now we're going to move into doing this little pattern. And again, couldn't be any easier. Very similar to the top. So here we go. We're going to go miss one stitch. In the next stitch, we're going to do two trebles. So we miss this one into this one. Two trebles. One and two. One chain into the same stitch two more trebles one and two we're going to miss one and then we're going to do a double crochet in the next one so you can see it's a bit sim very similar to the shell on the top but we've got actually less um trebles there we've only got four but we've got two one chain and a two so we're going to miss a stitch and into the next one again two trebles one and two, one chain and two trebles, one and two. Miss one, one double crochet. So we're going to be repeating this round. Miss one, two trebles, one chain, two trebles. We're going to miss one, one double crochet. Miss one, our, our treble combination. So we've got a two trebles, a one chain, and a two trebles. So miss one and a double crochet. Miss one and treble combination. Two trebles, one chain, two trebles. Miss one, double crochet. There we go, you can see we're about halfway around now. So we're going to keep doing that. So miss one, treble combination. One, two, chain. One, and two. I love working with little shells. You can get all sorts of shapes by making little shells. So miss one, double crochet. Miss one, treble combination. One, one and chain, one and one, all in that same stitch. Miss one, double crochet. I'm checking where I'm missing one then, I nearly went wrong. Miss one, treble combination. One, two, chain. I nearly went for the five then, like I did on the top. One and two. Miss one. Double crochet, last treble combination for this round. So we miss one into this space, two trebles, one chain, and two trebles. Now we're round now, but I don't want to sort of slip stitch join into the top of anything. I want to come back down here where we started the very first stitch. I want to do a slip stitch first, okay? Then I'm going to do two chain. That is going to count as a half treble. And then into this chain space here, can you see the chain space? We're going to do the combination again. So we're going to have two, oh, or maybe not, two trebles, one chain, and two trebles. Yeah. Now, where we had the double crochet on the previous round, which is here, we're going to do a half treble. Then into the one chain between the combination, we're going to do another combination. So we have the two trebles, one chain, 
and two trebles. I'm going to do a half treble in that double crochet and then I'm going to do two trebles, one chain, two trebles, half treble in the double crochet, treble combination in the one chain space. Let's do one chain and two. Half treble in that double crochet. Look, can you see how it's forming? I think it looks really cute, this sort of design. I love these shells. I mean, to be honest, you could go longer and longer in the same combination. If you want it to go broader, though, you would have to alter it. But at this point, you could get away with a few more rounds and make a longer skirt. So here we go. Treble combination, isn't it? Because we're in that one chain space. Half treble in the double crochet. So we have one, two and one chain and two trebles. If it doesn't split, that is. I'm trying to keep on the camera, I'm leaning forward a bit. I don't know why I've angled the camera like this. Right, uh, one half treble in that double crochet. And then the three treble, well, three treble combination. We're not doing a three treble combination, are we? We're doing two trebles, one chain and two trebles. We're almost round. You'd be glad to know you're almost there. We're nearly done. And then one half treble in that double crochet of the previous round. Treble combination. So we have a two, a one. And a do all in the same space. We have a half treble in our double crochet. And we have our last treble combination. So we have a one, a one, a chain, and a one, and a one. And remember, we'd already done a half treble here. So I just want to slip into the top of that half treble. Make sure you get both pieces. That's better. Nice and tight, and we're done. And cut it off. Now, obviously, you've got some ends to sew in, but well, they're not too bad. There's only a couple of ends there, thankfully. But basically, that is the skirt. Now, you will find when you slip it on her, it will be a little loose round here. It sits more on the hips. That is why I mentioned if you wanted to sort of make a little crochet sort of belt, you could do that. And all you need to do is, you know, like the chain we did here. You would just do a really long chain, do that on each ends that we did before. So let's just see how it fits. A bit awkward when it's over a boot. But yeah, can you see? It sort of sits, sort of hip position, just slightly below. But you want it to sit sort of just above her underwear, don't you? So if you're not using anything like the chain to tighten it up or anything like that, or if your little leather belt or whatever you do make yourself, I would recommend you make a chain, thread it through all the way, and then you can just sort of tie it at the front or the back. It gives a little bit of extra detail as well. So basically, that is it. That is my collaboration with the other people. And it's my little sort of outfit for our Emmy, Emmy Vanda. I've got to get a name right. I keep wanting to say Wanda, not Vanda, but it is a V. So I'm presuming that's the case. There's a little top there. And hope you're going to join in. Hope you're going to have a look at everybody else's tutorials. Hope you're going to have a go at making this and the other people's. As I say, this is the first time I've actually dressed my rainbow high. And I didn't think I was going to leave it on her. I thought I was going to put her in her other outfit. But I'm really pleased with it, actually. So I think I might keep it as an outfit. Obviously, this is the one that goes with that one because I've added that bit of chain. So that's it from me. If you enjoy my videos, please like, subscribe, share, etc, etc. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've made one. If you are on Instagram as well, please tag me if you do. I'll pop my Instagram link. I do have two Instagram channels. I do have the one for my smart dolls and then when I have one that's absolutely everything, basically. And that's the one really is just the best one to tag me in if you do do it. So once again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all very soon and bye bye for now.